Good morning. I'm Dilip Thakur, Editor of Education World. Good morning. I'm Samia Yasmin, Managing Editor. We are here to tell you about the latest September 15 edition of Education World, in which we have focused on the new Education Minister who was appointed a few weeks ago. Yes. The question we ask is, can this man revive India's sh shattered education system which has been devastated by the pandemic and at the same time he has to uh, implement the new national the education, education policy. policy. Absolutely. Okay, so we'll come back uh, to our cover story a bit later. Uh, we'll begin with uh, what we have in this issue for you. As usual, uh, the September issue of Education World is uh, uh, full of uh, information packed stories. Uh, let me begin by telling you about what we've done uh, this month in our editorial section. In our editorial section this month, we've uh, uh, written about uh, you know, uh, two issues. Uh, the first one being about um, how India's uh, parliament is always in chaos. I mean, there are no debates held. So in, in this editorial, we argue for, a, we make a case for the pres presidential government system. Yes, we need to pay some attention whether this system may work better. In the past, this has been discussed in the past and always been dismissed as that perhaps it will lead to dictatorship. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you have a parliament which is totally in chaos, uh, maybe this system which enables the president to choose the best talent in the country, regardless of whether they are members of parliament uh, in his cabinet, may be a better uh, uh, option and uh, parliament can continue to function as or not function as it us. Yes, and in our second editorial, we talk about uh, uh, the scheme uh, under the NEP 2020, where uh, engineering colleges, a few select engineering colleges in India, have been given approval to offer uh, engineering undergrad programs in uh, regional languages. And we argue why this is not a very good idea for the but, obvious reason of being that India's regional languages are not very well developed. Yes, and the textbooks don't exist at the moment, and neither are there people enough people who are sufficiently Finding well versed mm -hmm. in both languages to be able to translate them. Yes. So it's, it needs very careful consideration. Yes, and of course, in our education news section, we bring you what's happening latest from the states, the major states: Delhi, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal, mm -hmm. and. Uh, in Delhi, just to give you a little sneak peek, in Delhi, uh, we've written about a very uh, promising uh, development in K-12 education where the ARC state government has signed a collaboration with the international, the world-renowned International Baccalaureate uh, Board uh, to uh, have its government schools, uh, which are going to be called the Specialized Centers of Excellence, uh, about seven of them are going to offer the International Baccalaureate uh, curriculum. It's a very uh, promising uh, development uh, for uh, K-12 education in Delhi. Yes, and could serve as a model for all central government schools like Kendriya Vidyalayas, Jawahar, uh, Navodaya Vidyalayas. Yes, and uh, in our institutional profile section this time uh, we uh, focus the spotlight on the Man School Delhi, uh, which is ranked among the India's top 10 uh, take up boarding schools. And in our foreign institution IP, we uh, focus on Durham University, UK, which is one of uh, the UK's leading universities. Yes. And in our expert comment section, we have a very interesting uh, piece written by Professor Viraj Kumar. Uh, actually, this was an abridged uh, version of a lecture delivered by uh, Dr. K. Kasturi Rangan, the chairman of the uh, NEP 2020 Drafting Committee. Yes. And uh, in this uh, essay, uh, Professor Viraj Kumar argue, argues very uh, forcefully in favor of uh, why NEP prescribes multidisciplinary education. Yes. A proper explanation is given that, and he says that liberal education can unlock all inherent capacities of human beings, intellectual, aesthetic, social, physical, emotional and moral in an integrated manner. Yes, and in our Young Achiever section, uh, we highlight uh, the achievements of two uh, very bright and talented Young Achievers, Neha Harish and Rayanj Das. One is an author who's uh, you know, just published an uh, uh, anthology of poems and another one is a, a budding uh, architecture uh, designer 
who has recently won the Young Sustainable Designer Contest. Yeah. And this one of the young achievers, the author, is only 10 years of age. Mm. And now we come, of course, to our cover story, which is, is, is our main story, in which we uh, assess the chances of Mr. Dharmendra Pradhan, who has been appointed the new education minister in succession to Dr. Ramesh Pokhriyal, uh, who didn't, didn't do very much when he was there, uh, when he was education minister for two years, and uh, always refused interviews. Likewise, Dr. Mr. Pradhan has also refused to be interviewed by specialist magazine uh, like Education World. And uh, nevertheless, we offer some useful advice to him in, in, in a bona fide advice on how uh, perhaps uh, he should go about his job by citing and quoting uh, highly respectable uh, educationists, school leaders, and yes. others who offer advice in how we should, he has a very difficult task ahead of him. One is to get the schools back, children back in schools after the pandemic. And secondly, is to, to implement the national education policy. It's not an easy job that he's undertaken. We wish him very well, despite his refusal to talk to us uh, in the national interest. We wish him very well and uh, we hope that he follows some of the very important, uh, useful advice that is given in our Absolutely. Uh, cover story. Absolutely. And another very interesting teacher to teach your column written by uh, Professor Gitanjali Surendra, uh, who has ex excellent credentials. She is from JNU, Oxford, and Harvard. And she talks about historical thinking, the Prajnata way. Yes. And she, the basic point she is making that all subjects, history of all subjects, should be taught in schools mm -hmm. so that people know. Uh, the subjects better, I presume. <laughs> and very interesting people section where we, uh, you know, be in the spotlight on uh, people doing some very interesting and innovative way, uh, work in education. Indeed. Uh, one is a, uh, uh, you know, education provider to sports academies. Absolutely, yeah. online education. And then we've done the Dalmia Vidya Mandir CEO, Dr. Rosetta Williams, is going to, you know, expand in a big way. And we've also profiled an exemplary entrepreneur, Dr. Anita Sharma, who mm. is, who is so uh, physically challenged but has done wonderful work. Absolutely. And two uh, bright young uh, students who uh, of Calcutta University who have returned to their native Sundarbans and are doing some extraordinary work in uh, providing uh, uh, supplementary education uh, to uh, children over there. The tribal children yes. who are totally neglected. Yes. So, so some very interesting people, highly recommend you read them. Uh, they can serve as inspiration to many. Indeed, yes. And I, and of course, unlike any publication in India, we provide you uh, quite a lot of international news. It's very important uh, we don't uh, get into our own shed mm -hmm. in India, which we seem to be doing, and know what other people are doing in education. So we have stories from the United States, mm -hmm. one day, which is about the sale of edX, the MIT platform which provided free higher education, mm -hmm. and one uh, Indian-born professor, Krishna Rajagopal, has resigned from uh, yeah. edX because of that. And uh, there are stories from uh, India, China, France, United Kingdom, mm -hmm. Azerbaijan, Japan, Turkey, in our international yes. news section. Yes, and in our special report section, we've again done a very uh, interesting uh, human interest feature called Rural India's Rubin Saviors. So, in this story, uh, we've uh, highlighted uh, some very extraordinary and inspirational stories of about uh, six to seven uh, um, educators, uh, I mean, highly educated people. Uh, with, with degrees, some engineers, you know, highly educated uh, professionals who've left their corporate careers and gone into rural India yes. and uh, doing some remarkable work in uh, providing education in, into, skills into and highly neglected rural yes, India, yes. which uh, doesn't appear, I mean, very little appears about rural in education in the newspapers or in any other media. Yes. And these people are, uh, some of them are born in those. Uh, areas and they've gone back mm. after educating themselves mm. to help people 
in their in their in, in their native towns and villages. Yeah. It's a very inspiring story yes. written by a Delhi-based journalist uh, uh, Abhilasha Orja, yes. writing for the first time in our magazine. Yes. And uh, it's uh, really quite inspiring. Yes, and like Dilip rightly said that these uh, extraordinary, uh, highly committed uh, educators are going into deep into the rural hinterland. For instance, in Chhattisgarh, in the Naxal hit Bastar region, and uh, there's another lady called uh, uh, Ms. Sahu who runs a foundation called the 17,000 Peak Foundation, who's gone into deep, Ladakh, yeah. Uh, remote areas of Ladakh and Leh and the Kargil region where she's providing uh, requipping re government schools with infrastructure, tablets to provide uh, deprived children. Uh, education. These schools are, it's important to note, they're totally uh, uh, neglected. neglected in terms yeah. of uh, digital infrastructure. Absolutely. So, how, how have they met the challenges of uh, educating these totally neglected children? It's a very interesting story. Yes, indeed. And as usual, interesting book reviews, uh, they left this time too. Yes, we have got. Uh, uh, Amitabh Bosch's latest book, uh, set again in the Sundarbans, Sundarban, and where he talks about uh, history, mm -hmm. uh, a story, a mythical kind of story uh, with mythical origins set in the uh, Sundarbans. Mm -hmm. and, and a very interesting, another book review on the Malay, Malaysian version of the oh, Ramayana. Ramayana. As, you, as everyone knows that in Southeast Asia, there are a lot of uh, Ramayana stories. There are a thousand Ramayana stories yes. all over the world. And uh, in Southeast Asia, there are many versions in different countries with slight variations of the Indian Valmiki story. Yeah. Very interesting uh, yes. book review. Yes. And then, of course, in our postscript uh, page, which is uh, we take a tongue-in-cheek uh, look at uh, various uh, yes interesting Some very interesting uh, subjects covered, starting from Indian cricket uh, to the uh, Vodafone. Uh, uh, in uh, government of India uh, controversy Scandal, yes. and uh, and then we talk about Kerala. Kerala is uh, normally seen as India's most literate state, but we are, we question it. Is it more India's most intelligent state? Yes. So interesting information packed issue. We highly recommend you you read it. And before we go, as usual, a little uh, preview intro, preview of <laughs> what we've done in parents' world this time. Parents who are very interesting cover story, readying children for on-campus school. As we know, many states uh, in India, after almost 16 months of uh, education lockdown, have reopened schools. That's the longest lockdown in uh, among any major country yes. worldwide. Yes, and in our story, there are a lot of uh, mixed emotions. Children haven't been to school for over 16 months. So children are faced with many mixed emotions as our parents. There's also the angle of you know health and safety, learning loss, etc. So we give our parents some very useful advice from expert educators, uh, doctors, uh, nutritionists, uh, and parenting experts on how parents can ready children uh, to get back to back. the routine of school. Then there's a story on the benefits of playing sports and games in the light of the euphoria about the Olympics. Yes. And then uh, several other stories as usual. So, we wish you happy reading and stay safe and healthy. Yes. Education world and parents world. Please read them and join with us to make education the number one item on the national agenda. Because unless we develop our human resources, we will never become a developed country. Thank, Thank you. you.